first full day of campaigning in the Midwest for Vice President Kamala Harris and her running mate, Governor Tim Walz, and it provided a glimpse of how hotly contested the region is likely to get. On the Wisconsin tarmac, Harris nearly encountered Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance as he walked over to Air Force Two, trailed by his security detail. By then, however, Vice President Harris's motorcade had pulled away before they could interact. That the pair came so close to doing so was unusual given the normal, carefully scripted campaign schedules. However, not missing the chance to needle his opponent, Vance told reporters that he just wanted to check out his future plane. He also criticized Harris for not taking questions from the media or any reporters. On the other hand, campaigning in the state, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris termed herself and Walls as joyful warriors against Donald Trump. Understand in this fight, as Tim Walls likes to point out, we are joyful warriors. Joyful warriors. Because we know that while fighting for a brighter future may be hard work, hard work is good work. Hard work is good work. Walsh himself held back no punches in attacking Donald Trump. The Harris campaign has said that it raised $36 million in the first 24 hours after she announced Walsh as a running mate. We don't shy away from challenges. But I'll tell you what, Donald Trump, he sees the world differently than we see it. He has no understanding of service because he's too busy servicing himself. Again and again and again. Again and again and again. While Trump was missing from the campaigning, J.D. Vance had his own appearances in both Michigan and Wisconsin, portraying Harris and Walls as too liberal for the Midwest. Vance also attacked Harris and Walls on China and border issues. We have to be self-sufficient as a people. And if we're not self-sufficient, then it's going to allow the communist Chinese to run all over us. And that's exactly what they've been doing under the Harris administration. She has been the border czar for three and a half years, and Americans have suffered because of it. I know this community has been affected by it. I know I've seen the consequences of it personally. But the fentanyl that the Mexican drug cartels are bringing into our country, it is killing Americans by the bushels, and it is unnecessary. It is happening because of failed public policy. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has said that he's not confident Donald Trump will concede peacefully if he loses the U.S. election. This, as Kamala Harris warned that a Trump victory will usher in a lawless administration set on curtailing American freedoms. During a March campaign appearance in Ohio, Donald Trump warned of an economic bloodbath if he fails to win the election. The term bloodbath has been used out of context ever since by President Biden and his allies. At the time, Donald Trump was discussing the need to protect the U.S. auto industry from overseas competition and Donald Trump later made clear time and again that he was referring to the auto industry and America's economic woes when he used that term. We are now being joined by Professor John Porras of the Political Science Department at Northeastern University from Boston, Massachusetts. Professor, thank you so much for joining us on We On. What are your thoughts on President Biden's warnings regarding former President Donald Trump? Well, certainly there's some foundation to that because what happened in 2020 uh, was that where Trump refused to concede the election and has never conceded it actually since. So, I mean, there is a, a past history that that uh, uh, makes sense there in terms of uh, President Biden's comment. And it seems that we are expected to hear from the former president during a presser today. Uh, what do you expect to hear from the former president? Uh, it may be the first time that he's speaking publicly about Kamala Harris's decision to pick Tim Walz as her running mate. 
Well, I think he the comments that I've have heard, you know, consistent with what he's labeled um, uh, uh, the vice president, also Kamala Harris, of being uh, too liberal, too liberal for America, leftist. <clears throat> you know, she comes from California, uh, and uh, that Walls. Although there may have been times in the past when he was viewed as more moderate, he's actually, as governor, he was too liberal, uh, more liberal than what uh, what we want in America. I think that would be, you know, part of Trump's comment. He even made the the notion the other day. I saw some comment that he said, "Well, they'll, they'll become a communist regime, a communist uh, bring communism to the U.S." And that's a just kind of a scare tactic in the in the U.S. context to say something like that. And since yesterday, the issue that Tim Walz essentially lied for years about leaving the National Guard with the high rank of Commander Sergeant Major was making headlines in Minnesota. But yesterday, it, this issue came to the forefront of the national stage and the Trump camp and many Republicans are now concerned about Tim Walz being the kind of person that sort of backed out from going to Iraq, being deployed there and running for Congress. What are your thoughts on this and how big of a scandal can this become uh, for Kamala Harris's running mate? Well, I've read a little bit about it and just, you're right, it just come up, has come up recently. Um, I think there's some details there that, that need some clarification, but my understanding was that he was part way to that higher rank uh, but then ended up, he ran for Congress, and so he stepped out from the National Guard. So he didn't complete the process of coming to that higher rank. So you know, I think there is an issue there that uh, should be clarified. And then his unit, to my understanding, was not formally called up to for service overseas until after he had left the National Guard. But, you know, I, people will pick things like that and, and, uh, and try to make them into bigger issues. I don't know that it's that big of an issue. To be honest, um, I think, you know, he represent from Kamala Harris's perspective, he, you know, brought a, a variety of different kinds of experiences uh, and personality that she finds to be compatible with what she wants to do on the campaign. Thank you so much for joining us on We On Professor, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Okay, my pleasure. For all the latest news, download the WeOn app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.